Welcome back. We found um, Lewis Pate's car and discovered that Baines may be armed and is now using a black station wagon. But that's all we could do here, so let's go back to the station. Keith frowns. Okay, he says. I have much of paperwork to finish. Keith grabs a mic and calls dispatch. Dispatch for stream R2 is 10-8 from Oak Tree Mall. Dispatch comes on the air and spawns. For stream R2, 10-4, dispatch copy is 10-8 from Oak Tree Mall. Keith keys the mic. Dispatch for stream R2, be advised we are en route to the office. Dispatch answers. For stream R2, 10-4, we copy our en route to the office. As you drive along, mulling over your thoughts, a call from dispatch breaks the silence. Fishing R2, dispatch. Keith keys the mic. Dispatch, you're three married to, go ahead. Respond to cotton call, see the jogger standing by at the front move. Dispatch continues. Jogger's info on possible fault line with I have one traffic unit responding. Keith keys the mic. Dispatch, fifth free Mary 2, copied. Possible foul play, what could that be? Anyway, we should go there. Hotman Cove, we've seen that before, last time we were there. It was to um, identify the body of Marvin Hoffman. Keith keys the mic. Dispatch, 5th Free Mary 2, be advised we are en route to Cotton Cove. Dispatch answers. 5th Free Mary 2, 10 4, we copy our en route to Cotton Cove. Keith contacts dispatch. Dispatch, 5th Free Mary 2, 1097, Cotton Cove. Dispatch response. Fishing R2, 10 4, dispatch copy is 1097, Cotton Cove. Okay, Sonny, I'll give you a 2 to 1 odds for 50 cents that the jogger's a dude. Yes or no? You're on, because I know it's a girl. <laughs> he says, You're on, buddy. See, it's a girl. As the car pulls up, Keith winces. Oh no, I can see from here it's a gal. You got me again, partner. Here's your buck. Apparently we do this uh, often then. Oh well. It's his own, his own fault for betting. That's what you get when you gamble. Hi, Sani, Officer Gillespie says. The lady over there is a pretty shook up over what she's found. You'd better have a talk with her. Okay, that's as stereotypical as I can possibly make him. I know Italians don't actually talk like that, unless their name is Mario. And actually, his name is Mario. So I'm totally justified in doing this. Officer Gillespie continues, I'll stick around for a while, just in case you need me. Okay, let's talk to this jogger who has evidence of foul play. The young jogger is actually shaking with fear. Let's just look around, actually. This is Cotton Cove. It brings back many memories of your youth. As well as one memory of identifying the dead body of Jason Teselli, alias Marvin Hoffman. Okay, let's talk to the jogger. Oh, officer, it was terrible! There was, oh, blood and, and drag marks to the river! Blood? You say? In an excited voice, the woman says, I was jogging along the river's edge and and I came across something that looked like blood. Continuing, she says, I stopped to look and, and right next to the blood I saw marks that looked like something had been dragged into the river and, and footprints. I saw footprints. Yes, that's certainly unusual to see footprints in a park. Because people never go there to walk, you know? 
You attempt to interrupt, but she keeps rolling it out. She says, I got scared when I hit the brush crack, so I ran down here and called the police. You did the right thing, ma'am. The jogger says, Officer, please go look. I hope nothing bad has happened. The girl tells you the location. Just walk up river about a hundred yards or so. It's right next to the water. Okay, I guess we'd better check that out. But from what she said, it sounds like Baines might still be in the area, so we'd better be careful and load our gun and draw it just in case we come across uh, Jesse Baines or somebody else who might not be friendly. Keith says, I'm right behind you, partner. What, you're actually going to do something useful? Wow, color me impressed. Ah! I knew that was coming, but <laughs> it still startled me. Although shaking from surprise, confusion and fear, you somehow managed to return fire. I actually did that. You have to press F10 pretty quickly there. If you don't, you're dead. If you didn't align your sights properly bef uh, with at the shooting range before coming here, you're dead. Although the flight of your bullet misses its target, it comes close enough to cause the suspect to take leg bail. And if your sights weren't al aligned, it wouldn't come close enough. It would just fly completely wild. Baines wouldn't be scared off. He'd keep shooting and kill you. That's Sierra Games for you. Do something wrong in the beginning and... 20 minutes of gameplay later, you're dead. Okay, let's follow that guy. There he goes. Oh, he's leaving. Let's look at the car. Watch out, a car can be a deadly weapon too. Quite, if I had approached him at the bottom of the screen, he would have driven over me. Let's look at the license plate, see if we can make out anything more. See here you can see how nice it is that the game pauses while I'm typing, so I don't actually need to uh, hurry while doing this. Not? All you can make out is CO3. Okay. I misremembered the command, but I was still in time, so it's okay. It's not as if you get any points for doing this, anyway. Um, but anyway, CO3 at least matches the partial plate we have from the stolen car. But it doesn't give us any information we didn't already have. I guess we should try and catch that guy. Just walk back briskly. No need to run. It's not as if you're in a hurry. Uh, my gosh, Yasani, I heard the gunshots, stammered, stammers Officer Jalepsi. The jogger, frightened by the gunfire, runs away. Well, she is a jogger, so... And that's what joggers do, isn't it? Run. Okay, stupid joke. Let's get in the car and pursue him. Keith says, I don't think we can catch him, Sonny. He's probably long gone. Perhaps, but that doesn't stop me from trying. Keith tells Officer Gillespie, Mario, stand by and secure this area until we return. See, I told you his name was Mario. We're going to pursue him, but we'll do it in the next video.